Hello, my name is Dr. James Shamia. I'm a pulmonary critical care physician and also Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at the University of Tennessee Medical Center. Today we'll provide you another data update regarding the COVID-19 situation from a hospital perspective. This slide shows the hospitalization data across our region, with our region being defined as the counties at the bottom of the slide. The purple line are the patients that are in the hospital on each day and the red line in the intensive care unit. I mentioned last week, but there have been some changes in data reporting across the state, and so some of the data is not quite as up-to-date as prior, but you'll note that as of January the 18th, we had 521 patients uh, in the hospital across the region. You'll also note that the red ICU line continues to grow very slowly uh, as opposed to the rate of growth of the purple total line, again indicating that not as many patients are requiring intensive care with this wave as they did during the Delta wave. This is the situation at our hospital, and there has been a significant increase in the number of hospitalizations, up to 141 since we reported to you last week. On the right-hand side, though, just like for the region, you see that the ICU trend is fairly flat, whereas the total trend is increasing. This shows hospitalization data related to vaccination status. Uh, we do get a lot of questions about this, so I thought worth updating and showing again. This is all of our patients since November 22nd that have been in the hospital. And you'll see that 67% of the patients requiring hospitalization at our facility were not vaccinated. 2.7% had started a vaccination series but not finished it. 24% were fully vaccinated but without a booster and about 6% had been fully vaccinated and had had a booster. So the booster, again, definitely provides significant protection against hospitalization. This shows COVID-19 hospitalizations across the state. Uh, this is updated from what I showed you last week, and it compares our current census in the different population centers compared to the peak during the Delta wave. And so you see in Knoxville, we're at 67% of our prior peak, uh, but still rising. Memphis remains greater than 100% of their prior peak, and the middle region or Nashville region has increased to 82% of the prior peak. So uh, we're still watching this closely because we don't yet know the likelihood that we will exceed the number of hospitalizations in, in this region compared to what we had during the Delta wave. We thought it would be interesting to show you how long COVID-19 patients are needing to stay in the hospital now compared to previously. And our best way of doing this is to be able to show you the average over the past 30 days and compare that to the average over the last 90 days. So over the past 30 days, which has largely been the period of time of the Omicron wave, the average length of stay of a patient in our intensive care unit with COVID-19 has been 9.6 days, and in acute care or a regular hospital room has been 6.6 .6 days. When you go to the past 90 days, which will include a significant amount of the Delta wave as well, intensive care was 14.6 days and acute care was 8.5 days. So it would look like patients are not requiring hospitalization for as long as they were before. So the other question that we get asked most frequently is, when is the peak going to occur? When will we see the peak number of cases? Uh, we know hospitalizations lag behind cases. And so then the next question is, when will hospitalizations peak? Well, the short answer is we're really not sure at this point but every indication that we can see is that we're not quite at the peak yet. Often you don't know that you are at the peak until you're on the other side of it, uh, but every sense we get is that the numbers are still increasing. We just don't know for how much longer. The other thing, and I've emphasized this on, on multiple prior videos, is that we know this entire situation is putting stress on the healthcare delivery system, and the biggest stressor is illness and staff and staff absence. Uh, we know that there are all kinds of parts of society that are having to temporarily close because of illness uh, of a group of team members and employees. Even some outpatient health care offerings have had to temporarily close across the city. But obviously, in a hospital, uh, the doors have to be open all the time. And so that definitely presents challenges. And I think uh, what we ask for and what everyone asks for is just the, the patience of the community as we do our best navigating this difficult situation. So now I'll close, as I always do, with the community next steps. And I should say these have not changed. Uh, and so uh, the, the keys are 
to renew mask wearing. Uh, vaccinations are key, absolutely, uh, including boosters, as I've shown. And also, if you have symptoms, get a COVID test. Everyone needs to have a very low threshold to be tested at this point. And then follow isolation and quarantine guidelines from the CDC. As always, we appreciate your attention and we'll meet with you again next week for another update.